Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a really fun video for you guys today. We are going to be talking all about the beauty tips that I always do and I rarely, if ever, show them to you guys or talk about them. I can't remember how this video idea came to me, but I was thinking about a couple of the things that I often do off camera, sometimes before I'm getting ready, and I wonder to myself, why do I not show this to you guys on camera? Often it's the small things that I think are maybe less interesting, but I do think they are very important, so we're gonna be talking all about them today. Hope that you guys are excited about it as well. Before we jump into the video, special welcome to those of you that are new to my channel. I hope that you will consider subscribing, and of course, hit that notification bell if you would like to be notified when I upload a new video. And now let's go ahead and get into it. So tip number one, something I always do and don't ever show you guys, and it is all about sunscreen. I am an avid and diehard sunscreen fan and user. I use it all over my face pretty thickly every single day as part of my skincare routine. I am also trying to get better at reapplying sunscreen throughout the day because I do know that it does not last all day long. But one thing I never do, even if I don't have plans to go outside, is skip sunscreen application. I think it's important for everyone. I know that we probably probably all know this, but sometimes we think it might not be that important. And also, sometimes we might be tempted to think that our foundation is going to give us sufficient sunscreen coverage. That is not the case, however. It is important to apply sunscreen every day, whether you're inside or outside, you can still be exposed to UV rays. And while there are a lot of questionable studies out there about aging in general, pretty much everyone agrees the sun damages your skin and causes premature aging, in addition to the more severe side effects like cancer. Now, I know there are some nuances out there as far as what sunscreen works best for you. It's something Something that I think you have to experiment with. I have tried a lot of different sunscreens over the years. For many years, I was very religiously using the Neutrogena sunscreens, but I kind of moved away from those in favor of sunscreens that have zinc oxide in them, more mineral-based sunscreens. And while initially I didn't like the mineral sunscreens because they are the ones that tend to leave a white cast on your skin, I do find that as long as I apply that a good 30 minutes before I apply my makeup, that white cast does fade, it sinks into your skin, and I don't find it to be quite as greasy as the more chemical-based sunscreens. Now, I apply sunscreen everywhere. I try to get it as close to my eyes as possible without getting it right next to my eyes because if you've ever gotten sunscreen in your eye, you will know how painful and I'm sure dangerous that can be. But I really try to get it everywhere. I don't forget my neck. I try to put a little bit on my chest, especially if I have something a little bit more v-necked or low cut. And in the last five years, I've also tried to make sure that I put it on the backs of my hands. If you are someone that's under the age of 35, please heed my warning apply sunscreen to the back of your hands because they age so fast. I would say even faster than my face has aged, but the back of my hands have aged. That is something that really nobody talks about very much, but it's very important because trust me, you will look down at your hands one day and wonder what happened. The second beauty tip that I always do, but I rarely talk about, is curling my eyelashes. I almost never include that step of the makeup process on camera. And the main reason for that is that I curl my eyelashes before I start doing my makeup. So once I've sat down at my desk, the first thing that I'll do is sometimes apply a moisturizer or a primer if I plan on using a primer that day, maybe some lip balm to prep myself for filming or for the day. And then I always curl my eyelashes then before I start picking out my makeup and applying my makeup. Now I like to do it at this point because I do actually like my lashes, which are relatively naturally curled. I don't have the straightest lashes in the world, so I like them to have a few minutes to kind of relax just a little bit before I go in with my mascara so I don't get that very harsh kind of L shape in my lashes. Now, I actually was not always someone that curled their lashes. In fact, when I first started getting into makeup, which was really not that long ago, it was like 10 years ago, but I remember watching Lisa Eldridge talking about the importance of curling your lashes. And so I started trying it out, and at first I didn't really think it did much for me or I didn't really think that I needed it, so I kind of would, on a occasion curl my lashes and then go back to not curling them. And then I started doing it a little bit more. And as I did it more and went back to not curling them, I really started to see what she was talking about. She often would say that curling your eyelashes will really open up your eyes, making them look bigger and brighter. And now that I am officially an eyelash curler, I can absolutely say that that is true. Now this of course will vary from person to person because we all have different eyelashes. Some of us have extremely natural curl in our lashes and curling them would actually cause us more harm than good. But I think most of us could benefit from a good eyelash curl. It definitely helps open up your eyes. It makes your lashes appear even a little longer when you do apply your mascara. And you do not need a very expensive tool to do this. I just use the e.l.f. eyelash curler. I repurchase the pads for these in bulk when I am ordering from e.l.f. or when I find them at a drugstore. And I just try and replace them about every month or so. It works really well for me. I have been meaning to buy a higher end eyelash curler, like maybe the Shu Umura. I know there's a couple other ones out there that are very well known. But this $2 eyelash curler seems to work just fine for me, so I have not made that jump yet. Let me know if you guys think it is worth the splurge. But in the meantime, if you don't want to invest a fortune, you want to try it out. I recommend the one from e.l.f. I think it's great. The third beauty trick that I don't always show on camera is 
eyeshadow primer. Now I wear some form of eyeshadow primer anytime I do an eye look or put eyeshadow on, but what I actually use kind of varies. Now sometimes I will use just concealer, especially on days when I'm okay if my eyeshadow wears off a little bit or if it's not super hot outside or I don't have a very long day ahead of me. But for those long days that I want my shadow to stay in place all day long, I typically like to do both. I like to put a traditional eyeshadow primer on. The one that I love and use is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus eyeshadow primer. Love that one. I think it's amazing, but that one doesn't have a lot of coverage. So I will add a little bit of a concealer on top of that eyeshadow primer because the ones that I love and use aren't typically very thick or tinted. I will put that on before I go in with the rest of my face concealer. That way I can, when I'm doing my under eye concealer, I can also conceal my eyelids at the same time. And then before that has a chance to move anywhere, I will set it in place with a very light amount of translucent powder. I don't always include that in videos because it's something that I just don't think is very exciting. It takes a little bit of time and it's, you know, I'm trying to keep my videos concise for you guys, but I did want to mention it today because it is something that I do very often. And especially if you are someone that has hooded eyes, as I do, if you have problems with your eyeliner or your eyeshadow or your mascara transferring up onto your brow bone or your hood, use an eyeshadow primer. It makes all the difference in the world. And there are so many great primers out there nowadays that whether you're going drugstore or high end, there's just a lot of great options for you to keep that from happening. So take that time, do that extra step if you are someone that feels like you need it because it is something that I do pretty much every single day. The fourth beauty tip that I do almost every day, but I rarely show you guys, this is a newer one to me and it is layering mascaras. As I have tried a lot of different mascaras over the years, I've discovered that I like going in with an initial layer of mascara using a mascara mascara formula that is not clumpy, that is just going to coat and separate my lashes. Because I like mascaras that give me a lot of fullness, a lot of volume, those mascaras can often be a little bit clumpy, especially if you try to use more than one coat of them. So I like to start off with a very light base coat using a mascara that is not very clumpy. A couple that I really love for this are the Catrice Lashes to Kill. This is just a very natural looking mascara. It just lightly coats and separates my lashes without giving me a lot of clumps. Another one that I really love for this step is the Milani Highly Rated mascara. This is kind of a similar brush actually. It's kind of a natural full brush that just really evenly coats and separates my lashes. Before the mascaras that I really love to put on top, my three favorites are the Essence Volume Stylist. I've been talking a lot about this one because of its longevity and water resistance. This is also a great one because it makes my lashes very full and very long. Two more that I love to layer up on top are my Tony Moly Mascara. You guys know how much I love this one and also my It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. Now this mascara I actually don't think needs a base coat underneath it. It is fine on its own, but if you do put a light coat of clump free mascara underneath this stuff, your lashes are going to be out of this world long. So if you are someone that wants very intense lashes, but you find it hard to get mascaras to layer on top of themselves, try that little trick and see if it helps a little bit. The fifth and final beauty trick that I have to share with you guys is one that I'm going to give its own little name. I'm going to call it the second conceal. Now let me explain it this way. Very often when I'm doing my makeup, I almost always do my base products first before I do my eyes, before obviously I do my cheek products. I'll put my foundation and my concealer on where I need them. But very often when my makeup is all done, I will have areas that I covered previously that kind of like come through. They don't seem to stay covered very well, either because the products I put on top of them maybe disturb the coverage underneath a little bit, or maybe they're just really bad spots that tend to kind of seep through the coverage over time. I like to go back and cover up those difficult spots once my makeup is all finished. There are a few areas of discoloration on my face that do this all the time. I have a spot right here. You guys might be able to see it on my cheek. This is one that doesn't matter how much coverage I put on that thing or how careful I am with applying my blush and bronzer. This spot is going to peek through within like 20 minutes. What I like to do with this one is I will take the tiniest bit of a concealer that is kind of a full shade darker than my natural skin color and I will apply it very lightly onto the spot. You can see that tiny pinprick of a mark. And then I will just take my either my sponge that I used or my finger. I'm going to use my finger to show you guys. And I will just very lightly tap back over that area. And then if you really want to set that in place, you can go in with your sponge and a very small amount of translucent powder. I have my Rimmel powder here and I will just one time press it on top of that area. So as you can see, my cheek color stayed in place. I don't have a big white concealer spot right there, but because I use such a small amount and a darker color, it covered that spot up without disturbing the rest of my makeup. I like to do the same thing with active breakouts that I have that are poking through, hyperpigmentation, sunspots, acne marks, really anywhere that I feel like needs a little bit more coverage. I'll do that second conceal to make those areas look flawless, but not put too much more product on my face. And with that, you guys, those are all my beauty secrets. Those are all the little things that I do that 
I don't often show you guys. Now, some of these seem very insignificant or unimportant, but I think they are all big parts of my makeup routine, which is why I do them almost every single day. But I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And of course, I would love to hear any beauty tips that you guys have that maybe I haven't heard about or tried. I'd love to know what those are. Leave them down in the comments below. And that is all I have for you guys today. One more reminder, please subscribe before you leave. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye. I can't just on the fly be funny because right? I'm actually not that funny. Okay, here's a funny story. I have a very self-deprecating sense of humor, so when somebody leaves me a good roasty comment, I am equally hurt and admire those comments. Like, dang, that was a good, that was a good one. I've actually thought about doing a top roasted comments from my comment section. I, I still don't think I have quite enough to do a whole video on that, but I'd also worry that it would turn into that office episode where Michael Scott asks all of his employees to roast him, and then he ends up getting his feelings hurt and running out of the room crying. <laughs> see that happening to me. So the comment was this. It was my video that I did the one take video and I said something about I'm not gonna be able to be funny because I can't be funny without editing and someone said well you're not that funny even when you do edit and I was like but I'm it was actually pretty funny and it was hurtful because it, it's true. <laughs> I'm not here to be a comedian. I'm here to talk about makeup. And I know my nails are blue and clash with everything that I'm wearing today, but it's state playoffs this week for summer baseball and our team's doing really good. So I, I painted my nails in support of my son's baseball team because that's what moms can do to support their kids. Doing my part to support the team.